certified past life regression healer, a Reiki master, and intuitive psych, uh, psychic medium. So please help me welcome Lisa Chalmers. I see some familiar faces, and I see not so new face, faces now, too. So I'm Lisa Chalmers. I've been a hypnotherapist now for about five years, and I specialize in past life regression and past life healing. So um, is everybody familiar with hypnosis? Maybe, maybe not. So hypnosis, the way I describe it, people are like, what is it like to be under hypnosis? Um, it's almost like a deep meditation, basically. Uh, you, I call it mom ears. So when you go to sleep at night, sometimes you can hear the, your partner, you can hear the dogs or the animals, you can hear the refrigerator running, but you're just so tired, so heavy, you just don't want to move. Unless there's an emergency, of course, you, you pick right up. But that being said, that's what hypnosis is. You can hear me like I'm talking to you now, but you're just so relaxed, so, you know, your conscious mind kind of steps aside, and then that way, you know, you can hear me just like I'm talking to you. But I basically talk to your subconscious. We, what we want to do when you have some sort of issues, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's, you know, addiction, maybe it's, you know, just getting out of your own head, I talk to your subconscious, and I'm just kind of like a tour guide, basically. I just, you do it yourself, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, but I just kind of guide you through it. So that's what I do also with past life regression. So past life regression is what I do is I take you back to two childhood, happy childhood memories. We go and do a lot of womb healing because we pick up a lot of stuff from our parents that we just don't realize. Um, you know, first time parents can be stressful. Sometimes the baby picks that up. So we go back and heal that because you don't want to carry that anxiety with you through your life, you know. So it just falls away very subtly. Um, like dominoes. So you'll be thinking, oh wow, I should really be upset or whatever. And you're like, I'm not, this is great. It's very subtle changes um, within. So with past life though, people can bring gifts, talents forward, or sometimes you might have things that are negative that come forward in this lifetime. Some people also talk about karmic, um, ancestral karmic, um, healing also, because sometimes, depending on your culture, like say Africans, they, uh, in Africa, some tribes, they think that you cannot even talk to God or source unless you go through your ancestors. Chinese, same thing. You have to um, pretty much kind of pray to your ancestors so that they're okay in the past life also. So they, you know, will guide you in this lifetime in the present, but they're okay, their journey is still being carried forward and you honor them that way. So just depending on culture, but I'm finding more and more that, um, that ancestral karma is becoming a big deal. People are holding on to ancestral karma and we're not only supposed to help fix it, um, but also kind of just acknowledge it, basically. Um, so, that being said, I want to start off by talking about I am's a little bit. So I'm going to pass around my, my bowl. So I want you guys to, and I've done this before, where just pull a card out and just think about setting your intention of maybe bettering, like going with an I am before these meditations. Um, so that we have like a kind of intention set when I take you for a, a quick meditation. So the meditation I'd like to do today is um, pretty much uh, going down and meeting with a guide, an angel, an ancestor, to kind of give us some sort of information of something that we need to know and work on in the present. So getting back to my, I'm sorry, my uh, past life. Um, we do bring in um, gifts, talents also. If you're a healer in a past life sometimes, and you want to be a better healer in this life, you can bring that talent through. If, say, take Mozart, who could compose and, and play music at five. You know, that's definitely a past life talent that he brought through. Um, there's been documented um, cases where little children are, talk about being in World War II or being in the First World War and, and knowing knowledge that they just have, you know, which there's no explanation for. So, but then we also bring in bad karma, meaning sometimes we were a witch or a warlock and we maybe have a, a pain in our back or we just feel this choking feeling all the time and we can't, the doctors can't explain it, no one can explain it, you know, you weren't injured in this lifetime. But going back to a past life regression, some people have found that they 
were stabbed or usually uh, hung or drowned or something. And that explains a fear or anxiety that can come forward. So, I know I talk really fast, I apologize. Does anybody have any questions? I like to just save most of the time for the meditation because that's the fun part. Any questions? Yeah, please. Um, how do you deal with things like in the past, like maybe we were not the race that we are now? And so, how do you, like, if, like you said, that in the Chinese cultures and things like that, you yeah. know what that person may have been before? Well, that's the, that's the neat thing. That's the really cool thing about going back to the past because we've all been victims, we've all been murderers, we've all been warriors, we've all been healers, we've all done these different things. Just And then when I ask to go back to a past life, I always ask to go to a, a significant life that will help you in the present. So sometimes it's different dimensional. Sometimes it's not you're not even here on earth. So sometimes I'll say, okay, is it daytime, nighttime? It's nighttime. Okay, scan your body. Are you wearing shoes? Are you wearing, you know, sandals, boots, barefooted? Oh my God, I have talons. Oh, that's great. Now scan your body up. Oh my God, I'm a dragon. So you can be different dimensions from different dimensions also. I've had people be aliens, be just a body of light, you know, and they can't describe it. I have no body. I'm just this light. That's so cool. I've also had people go to the future. And I've, and I've learned recently that the future, going to the future, a future life, it's almost like an intuitive reading. When you go in there and you get readings, it's kind of talking about the future. But we have free will. We can change it. So if you're some warrior and you don't like it in the future, it's giving you some sort of knowledge that you need in the present, one. Two, you can change it, you, you know? And then also, there's also another, when you get into quantum, quantum physics, sometimes they feel like, your past, present, future is all at the same time and it's happening in the same moment. Almost like a juxtaposition, you know, it's all in the same moment. So, you know, you really, it's really hard if you can just be open and freeing and kind of be open and not think too much or not concentrate, get hung up on the logistics of it because we're human. It's hard to kind of think about that kind of thing. So, that being said, I've seen it all. Aliens, different dimensions, you know, a lot of here on Earth. Um, and then I've also had people who are in the same lifetime at the same time, you know, like, let's go back to a past life. Oh, it's Paris in 1700s. Then we go and do it again. Oh, it's Paris, 1700s. Really? Are you a man or a woman? Well, this time I'm a, I'm a man. I was a woman before. So, again, it kind of gets kind of heady, and if you can just open yourself up and be mind and just let your mind go, then, then it makes sense. It's okay. It just, you can feel it, that it's okay. But yes, so we are doing past, present, future all at once. So anybody else? Questions? I know, again, I talk really fast. So if you're ready, go ahead and just get comfortable. Good, good, good. <coughs> I'm sorry. I tend to go over, so I'm trying to be mindful. Okay, go ahead, just, I'm gonna ground you all first, that's what I usually start with, so go ahead and imagine a beautiful, beautiful purple light above your head, or you can make this light any color you choose. Just let that beautiful purple light come over you, starting at the top of your head and just kind of gracefully going down, covering your forehead, your face, Shoulders. You can go ahead of me or you can go slower than me. Your speed is what you need to go to. Whatever, whatever works for you. Pulling that beautiful purple light down over your body. And as it does, it's going to take all the negatives from today with it. And as you let that beautiful purple light continue to go, move over your chest and your arms. Hips, legs. Just taking you down, deeper relaxed, listening to the sound of the rain outside. Getting in that beautiful head space. Good. And as you let that beautiful purple light go all the way down to the, to the ground, let it go to Mother Earth. 
Let her transmute that energy. Good. Whenever you're ready, you can bring up a beautiful, beautiful golden light from Mother Earth. Bring it up and have it come up through your feet, to your calves, up your thighs. Good. And as that beautiful golden light comes up through your feet, you're bringing in positive affirmation. Maybe it's your I am. Maybe it's one that you've come up with on your own. But as that beautiful, beautiful light comes up from the ground, it's going to transmute all any of that other energy. It's going to bring in the positive. Good. And it comes up to your chest and your shoulders. Good. Now wherever you're at, in your mind's eye, turn to the left for me. And as you turn to the left, you notice a beautiful garden gate. Now this beautiful garden gate can be made of anything that you choose. Maybe you might not even see the garden gate. Maybe it's just a feeling of a garden gate, or maybe it's a color. Again, you're in control. Whenever you're ready, this garden gate can only open to your touch, and your touch alone. So go ahead and raise your hand up to this beautiful garden gate and push your way through. And as you step over the threshold, you notice another beautiful garden. Now this is a sacred space. You can come here anytime you choose. But for now, we're going to make it a garden. And as you walk down this beautiful garden path, you notice on either side of you the beautiful flowers. And as you move down this garden path, you notice that the head a beautiful mirror. And I'm moving you kind of fast, so you can go at your own pace. But as you listen to the rain outside, and as it starts raining heavier and heavier, you feel like you're going deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper down, down. So totally relaxed. Hearing the sound of the rain just makes you go deeper deeper down. Good. And the deeper you go down, the better you feel. And the better you feel, the deeper you go. Good. Now again, you might hear different kinds of noises outside or inside. But any kind of noise that you hear is just going to fade to the side. You're going to acknowledge it, but you're going to let it guide you down deeper and deeper. And as you continue down this beautiful garden path, you notice that beautiful mirror. You notice this special mirror. This mirror will let you see what you desire, what you maybe need to work on. Something for this moment. Very good. And as you look into this mirror, you see someone, something. Maybe it's a light. Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's an angel, a guide. Ask. Ask what they're there for. Also ask what you need to work on at this particular moment in time, in this present lifetime. What's the one thing that you can do to help continue on your path? Good. Let the rain just guide you down, deeper and deeper down. 
so safe, so secure, so relaxed. Good. So I want you to use all your senses right now. If you can't necessarily see a person, what do you feel? Are you calm? Are you scared? Do you feel anxious? Give it back to them. Unless it's pure joy or pure love, give it back. Let them help you with that. Whatever you're feeling right now, give it back to them. Let them take it away for you. So the rest of the day is calm and cool and safe. It goes smoothly for you. Good. Now in your next breath, wherever you're at, ask the question to them, what do I need to work on in this particular moment in time? Does it have to do with the past? Does it have to do with ancestral karma? See if they'll give you some information. They might even have a present for you. They might even have a gift. Good. Feel totally relaxed, totally calm. Good. Now, wherever you're at, if you know that something's going on in your life at the present, give it to the person that's in front of you or the energy in front of you. Use your I am. If it's a negative, like addiction or stress or anxiety, ask them to help you with it. And if they've given you a gift, use that talisman to put it in your pocket or place it anywhere you want to on your body. Now you can come back here anytime you choose. Again, this is a sacred space. And that garden gate will only open to your touch. But it's like a different world. You can create all different places to go down these paths. Maybe it's the beach, maybe it's the forest, or the jungle, the woods, the mountains. Whatever you find that you feel like you're at peace, you can come back here anytime you choose. And then tonight when you go to sleep, you'll go down swiftly, easily, calmly, gently. As soon as your head hits the pillow and you're ready to go to sleep tonight, you'll go down swiftly, calmly, easily, and gently. And from this moment forward, you'll be able to take the items that you need to and work with them. You'll be able to create a ball of light and put it, place it anywhere on your body, anytime you choose. Good. Now I know this is kind of a quick little session. But you guys got a gift. Put it in your pocket or place it anywhere on your body. Know that you're loved. And from this moment on, you'll have internal motivation. And this moment on, you'll have that internal drive to do what you need to do to accomplish your goals. From this moment on, this second on, you will have that love, that force of nature within you to be kind and to love your neighbors. Good. Now 
now when you're ready. I'm going to count from one to three, and as I count from one to three, you'll come back up out of hypnosis. One, coming back into your body, hearing all the things, sights and sounds around you. Two, feeling your fingers, your toes, feeling back in the chair. And three, eyes open, fully awake. Good. You guys, I know it's kind of a crazy afternoon with it raining really hard, and um, were you able to go? Were you able to go? See? Good. So you can use this anytime you choose to. And I talked about the mom ears kind of thing where what hypnosis is about. As you're going to sleep at night, you know, you feel really heavy, but you can still hear things. Use your conscious mind at that particular, mind, at that particular time to set your intention. Maybe say some prayers, whatever you choose. But as you're going to sleep, try to stay in the positive because the conscious mind steps aside and goes to sleep. But your subconscious stays awake for that four to eight hours, however long you sleep. So when you're on that hamster tape um, wheel going, oh, I just really, I can't believe that person did this, this, and this, and just negative, and it just fills you with angst. The next morning, it's like you wake up, and it's like, if I had a knife, I'd stab you. You know, it's like one of those. It gets very intense because your subconscious, that's all it has to work on is, you know, during that time. But if you go to bed, even if you're saying your I am's or I am joyful, I am healthy, I am enough. If you're going to bed, the subconscious will be like, oh, she really wants to work on that. You almost feel better in the morning. I'm not a morning person, believe me, but I don't want to stab somebody. So it's, you know, it kind of works. <laughs> so think about that. Just if, if you take away from anything from this, it's just try to stay in the positive mindset as you're going to sleep at night because your subconscious needs something to work on and you want it to be positive, basically. Thank you for coming to the Addison Fair. I know it's a kind of a crazy day. Um, up next is beautiful Jennifer Hall. So take care and uh, come see me. See you guys later. Bye-bye.